I recently started learning Mandarin Chinese. It is really a fun language to learn, and also it has quite different sound characteristics than the most of the languages. For example, it has four major tones, and also a fifth tone, which is not mentioned here. And this makes language very versatile and fun to learn. This is not actually the hardest part of the language. Hardest part is the alphabet. It is not even technically called an alphabet, mostly like a logosyllabic, because they have a different shape for every different word. Yes, that's right. First, I thought about buying flashcards for specifically Chinese, and it helps for children, so why not? It would also help me as well. But it's not even practical, you cannot carry those all with you. And suddenly an idea came to my mind. I have this key fob that I use to connect to the VPN. And I thought having something similar laying around would be pretty easy to review all the new words that I came by. My first requirement is the form factor. Also my classmates are really interested with my idea, so I wanted to make something which is easy to do even if you don't have any electronics knowledge. You can easily do this project, if you are okay with do it yourself way. First I search for a widely available board which you can just buy it and just program it. And also it needs to have a screen of course to see what's written. There are wide range of boards available. Uh, which can, can use it in this project but I came across to this board and which is exactly what I am looking for it has a small form factor and has a small OLED display and at the same time you don't need to do any soldering or, or whatsoever only thing you might need to solder is the actually the cable itself which you can solder it on an lithium ion battery and that's it I think it is pretty easy for, even for a beginner to use this board and the PCB board came with a case itself and it is looking pretty decent and I think it is should be fine uh, after the shipping of course first of all I already know that this is not the perfect board for this project because the board itself uses ESP8266 it is quite popular for DIY projects because of its Wi-Fi capability but I don't plan to use it for Wi-Fi because I want to make something really simple to do and also I really want others to do something similar for themselves and of course use it for their own studies. It comes with a battery connector which you can use it to solder or connect it to lithium-ion battery and of course it's not the perfect choice for battery powered applications but it should be fine I think I have tons of lithium ion batteries which I collected uh, from the e-cigarettes that I found on the streets I will be just using one of those batteries this part is for real beginners and if you already have Arduino board installed and also ESP8266 board is defined on your Arduino IDE then you can just skip this part first thing you need to do is downloading the Arduino IDE and you can do this from arduino.cc and just follow the instructions after you download it and install it to your PC and if you have never worked on the ESP boards before you need to add it to your Arduino IDE as well and to do that you can just type in your search engine as add ESP board to Arduino IDE and you can just click on the first search available I will also copy paste the text that you need to paste it and you just need to follow these instructions it's quite straightforward just copy and paste the link to your additional board manager URLs and then just click OK then you need to go to the tools boards and board manager you need to type in ESP8266 and press enter. After that, you need to click the install button and it will just install the relevant 
files to your computer and you will be good to go. For this specific project, you need to install Python as well. To do that, type Python on your search engine and go to python.org, go to downloads and download the latest version of it. Installing Python is pretty straightforward, you just need to follow the instructions on your PC. You can then connect your ESP board to your PC using a USB cable. These ports usually came with a test software which is pre-installed on the board before they ship it to you and if you see something on your OLED display which means that your board is working fine. Also blue LED is blinking and that means that you have not connected any battery to your board but it won't cause you any trouble for installing a new firmware. I uploaded all the necessary files to the GitHub page and of course you can find it down in the descriptions. You need to open this link and just download all the files to your computer. After downloading it, you need to unzip it and open the file. One of the most important files here, I think, is the input.csv file. You can open this file by Excel and see the contents of it. You can also add your own words. Of course, you can also delete the words that you already know. And one important thing is this file shouldn't contain any header. And also the column order should be exactly like this. First column should contain the word in your target language. And second column is the phonetics and the third one is the meaning of course. So I included additional language cards for Chinese Mandarin and Japanese as well. So you can upload any one of them depending on your level to your device. And for Japanese, GLPT and one level is also there with two parts. If you are keeping your own word list, you just need to open input.csv file and add a new line at the end of it then it will be visible and then of course you need to save it also if you would like to use one of the cards that i created or someone else created you need to copy the level that you have and delete the input.csv file and rename it as input.csv after this you can click e-flashcards.python file and it will create an Arduino code for yourself, which is converting all the words to an array for Arduino. And you don't need to know about what is array or not, just you need to click OK button. And after IDE is open, then you need to install this library U8G2. If that's not installed, you need to go to the tools and manage libraries and you need to paste the library name to library manager from here and hit enter then you need to install this library after that you can close that window and of course you need to check if you selected the correct module ESP8266 port generic is fine and you need to check if the correct COM port is connected if you are not sure you can just disconnect your board from your PC and install it again and you, the COM port will reappear after that just click the upload button and it will compile the sketch and it will take a while so don't worry about it that's totally normal and at the meantime if you already attached a lithium-ion battery to your board that will be charged up so yeah take your time and maybe you can just grab a coffee or something after the film may have been compiled the PC will upload the code to your board and you can see the progress on the screen as well I wrote the code for specifically for Chinese Mandarin, but you can also use it for any language as well. 
and you need to of course install the fonts for it because without fonts you won't be able to see anything on the screen as well but you can easily do it with small modifications in the code and I will just show it to you afterwards so if you would like to use it for any other language rather than Chinese you just need to change the font and that's it and I already picked up a font for Japanese and to be able to set that you just need to delete these two dashes and also you need to of course deactivate this and same thing is for here as well and that's basically it also if your target language is using any different fonts like for example Indian or something you can just delete this sentence and f find a correct font for it uh, which that you like of course and just type in the name so you can just search the name of the language and also U8G2 in the Google search bar the LED here will continue blinking because we don't have any battery connected to the board yet but apart from that it is ready to use and all you need to do is clicking the reset button uh, the, the button down below and the words will change and you can just continue practicing when you press the reset button it will show you up a random word and after a few seconds the OLED will turn off and the microcontroller will enter to the deep sleep mode to save battery I also designed the gaze which I can just attach it to my keychain and use it while waiting a bus or something if you do the orientation right you don't need to add any support or anything you can just print it as it is and also I designed it as a tight fit so you wouldn't need any glue or anything to attach two pieces together also on most of my 3D printing projects people often ask me about my print settings so I decided to just show it and how I do it actually for this project I will select 100% infill because I want that to be as solid as possible I'm not going to touch any other settings here except infill and default settings are pretty fine actually so you don't need to mess around with them and material is set to PETG and I have 0.4 mm nozzle after placing to slide button just I will save it to SD card I am using pet bottles as a filament because it is just convenient and also free if you want to watch that video where I show how to use pet bottles as filament you can click the card on the corner pet bottles are usually colorless and I like giving them some color if you want to watch that video as well you can click on the card on the corner too spoiler alert the trick is using a permanent marker only thing left is to print the case for the PCB card and if you are a maker I definitely recommend you to buy one they are just very convenient and if you are a Mandarin Chinese classmate of mine of course you can ask for my help I can 3d print a case for you if you follow the tutorial to this point already for the rest of you guys well maybe you can find a friend who has a 3d printer and you can ask him for help as well I would like to mention some differences between two boards that I have ordered I have ordered one uh, with a black PCB and other with a white PCB and I don't know the reason but white one has buttons which is facing upwards and also black one has buttons on the side so you have to click it on the sides first I created a case for the whiteboard which has the button slots uh, facing upwards and then I wanted to order another one with a black PCB and unfortunately the case didn't work because the buttons were on the sides 
So I had to redesign another case for the PCB which has buttons on the sides. Just be careful before you print it and pick one that fits your PCB. This is the case after the 3D print and 3D printing is finished and it looks like this and apparently black permanent marker has a really dark blue color. And also I kept collecting all the e-cigarettes that I found on the streets so I have really too much lithium ion batteries which I can uh, pick from. I designed the case for disposable e-cigarette batteries but you can use any lithium ion batteries which you have laying around. After soldering the cable and attaching it to the board you can just place the PCB in the case and just push the upper part on the bottom part. There is no need for any glue or anything because it is a tight fit. And this is the case that I designed for the PCBs which have the buttons on the sides. Everything is the same except the location of the buttons. There is one software which I think pretty amazing and it is called Anki. It uses the spaced repetition program and well most people have this software installed whether in their PCs or you can of course install it to your mobile phones as well both Android and uh, also Apple phones and if you like using this uh, software and already created a deck you can upload those to the e-flash card uh, that I created as well. To do that, of course, you need to export your cards in CSV format and it already has one add-on which lets you do that. You just need to go in this uh, web page from the Anki website. Don't worry, I will put the link in the descriptions. And you need to just copy uh, these numbers, which is laying around here, and go to Tools, Add-ons. And here, just click Get Add-ons and paste the code here. It will download and install. And that's it. So, if you would like to export the cards, I have the Japanese kanji uh, words here. You just need to go here, export, and select the CSV file, and then click export. And I exported all the GLPT uh, level words uh, like this. And of course, you can export yours as well. Just click save, and that's it. Sometimes, Microsoft Excel cannot recognize the CSV files right away, so you might see a bunch of weird characters and such. But there is a simple trick to solve this issue. To solve the issue, I go to Data tab and from here, from text slash CSV button and select the CSV file that you created and Excel will just recognize it. Then you can just save the file and upload it as usual. And then you need to go to the file that you just saved and click the button. And it will automatically recognize what that is about. And it will even fill the column on the right order. And just click load. And that's it. You can just save as as a, of course, CSV file, comma separate, the limited CSV file, and save. Next time you open the Excel file, everything will be right in order. And if you want, you can just delete the first line, and this file is ready for upload. One thing to mention is around I guess 500 or 600 uh, words later, you need to create another array in the microcontroller. But if you keep it under 600 words, then you will have no issues whatsoever on the memory side. This project turned out to be better than I expected. 
because I started practicing Chinese whenever I remove my keychain from my pockets and also if I leave it on the desk while I am working none of my colleagues actually wonders what that is and I can practice on the incognito mode if you like this video don't forget to give a big thumbs up and see you next time